y'all welcome back to my channel so as you can tell by the intro and the title of this video today i'm going to be showing you guys what i do for self-care sundays the first thing i do is go to church so you can see me pairing these american eagle jeans with this shein shirt that i got for like under ten dollars which is a steal um and in this clip i'm just getting ready i think like it's important for me to start off self-care sundays with going to church because it helps me prepare spiritually and mentally, emotionally, and physically for the week, and just learning how to grow and be better in my walk with Christ, not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. So it's a good start and refresher on self-care Sundays, but also to help take that into the, the week and regroup. As you can see in this video, I am using my lock perfume that I created. Um, if you want to check on my YouTube channel, how I made this oil, make sure you check it out. It smells really, really good. I think when you smell good, you feel good and you look good. So yeah, that's what I did in this clip. I'm pairing this outfit today with a Michael Kors navy blue or dark blue bag, whatever color you want to say. I thought it was super cute. Not too matchy-matchy, but still matched. Okay, so after a long day and being at church, I like to just stimulate my scalp and just show my locks and my scalp some self-care and love i think that's super important to hair growth um i've had my hair in like a bun pretty much all week which i shouldn't have done so my scalp is a little tender i just need to show it some love so first thing i like to start off doing is moisturizing with some spring water and some jojoba oil i pretty much use jojoba oil for every single thing but i like the way it feels on my scalp and it's not too heavy it's super light so after I put the water and the jojoba oil, I use this little tool. I don't even know what it's called. I bought it maybe like a year ago from like Walmart for super cheap. And it's a way for you to massage your scalp. And I think it's very easy to use with locks because it doesn't have like metal prongs that could like pull your hair out. It's plastic. So you just rub it across your scalp in a circular motion and it'll stimulate your scalp. So you'll see how I do it. Random side note, but let's have a little chit chat about Jimmy Butler and these lock extensions, okay? I want to know y'all thoughts on this. Social media was in a frenzy when they seen him do this transition video and get lock extensions. I don't know. Personally, you know, if somebody was to ask me if they should start with lock extensions or if they should start with their regular hair, obviously I'm going to recommend that they start with their regular hair. I do think there are a lot of um, benefits that comes to, you know, using your real hair in your lock journey you learn a lot of things about yourself about your hair in general and just learning patience growth all of those kind of things are a big effect of starting your own lock journey with your real hair but you know at the end of the day I'm not gonna like say oh he's not a part of the lock community or he cheated or whatever the case is I know a lot of people say like if you get lock extensions you cheated I think at the end of the day people have to make the best decision for them. Like there may be a regimen that I use that somebody else may not want to use. So like, you know, outside of Jimmy Butler in general, I think people who wear lock extensions, if that's what you choose to do, that's what you choose to do. And you're still a part of the lock community because you have locks. Now, I don't know. Let me not speak for the lock community because some people be like, mm -mm, no, you're not. So never mind. Let me just take that last sentence I said away. But I'm not going to not, you know, love you just because you got lock extensions, okay? Like, people do the best decisions for them. However, I do think he's getting a lot more slack because he's a male getting lock extensions versus if he was a woman. Just because males aren't typically the people who get weaves and extensions, it's normally women. And I think I can understand that point as well because I personally don't think men should wear extensions. Um... That's my opinion. That does not mean I'm not going to love you because you wear like extensions, but that's just kind of what I think. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. So the next thing I like to do on self-care day is do my waxing. Before I start my waxing, I like to do um, the traditional spa wax melts on my wax melter to make my house just smell good and set the ambiance of like a spa day or spa treatment. The cleanup is super easy and convenient and it's like cheap. Um, now I got these wax beads. I just love the sound of the wax beads. So let's listen to this real quick. I don't know. It's just so satisfying. These wax beads are like hypoallergenic, good for sensitive skin, vegan. And so I'm basically just letting them melt all the way down. And it's going to be very liquidy. Um, 
But once it's liquidy and melted all the way down, I can cool it down a little bit before I actually start and do my prep work on my legs. So as you can see, it's super liquidy. You don't want to use wax when it's super liquidy. One, because it's probably too hot and it's not at the right temperature to like spread good on your skin. I did wax my underarms like two weeks ago. Um, so that's the only reason why I'm doing my legs right now. So I'm going to cool this down at like maybe 130 to 150-ish to get a good wax texture. Before I waxed my legs, I did this off camera. I used this raw sugar scrub that I got from Target. It smells really good um, and it's a really quality product. It's still vegan as well. And I just use that on my legs. As you can see, my legs look super shiny and that's because I used the sugar scrub to get away the dead skin. Right here, I'm just using a cotton round to um, clean and prep my legs. So as you can see, this is not on slow-mo. This is how the wax looks. You see it's coming off the stick a lot slower. It's not as clear as it was before. It's ready to use. So y'all can see how I'm doing it. It took me a while to kind of learn how to, you know, apply the wax without it like breaking. Um, so basically I just put it in the direction of the hair and where it's going. And then I'm going to pull in the opposite direction. So I kind of changed angles for y'all to see how I'm putting it on a little bit better. But I like apply pressure with the stick to smooth it down in the way the hair is growing. And then I put a little lip on it just because when you want to pull it off, you need to have something to grab onto. So like practicing that was like kind of hard. But once I got the hang of it, it gets super easy. I'm not experienced enough yet to do one big strip down my leg, so I just kind of do multiple strips at a time, but it still works, and it came out really, really nice and smooth. Y'all not gonna lie, sometimes it's just like terrible pulling off the wax yourself because you know it's gonna hurt, but you still gotta take it off. I don't know, it hit different when you gotta remove the wax strip versus when somebody else is, but I think it's been going good so far. I don't get a lot of ingrowns. Um, and just being able to do it myself and save the money is good. But if you're not built for this, pff, go to the go to a professional. <laughs> go to a professional. But I do think like watching a lot of videos help me. So this is just kind of what my hair looks like after taking off the wax strip. So now it's time for my mani pedi. So first I do my pedicures. I put some Epsom salt and some hot water um, and I also add some essential oils and I let the water cool down. So I, I boiled the water first, but I don't put my feet in right after it being boiled. I let the Epsom salt and the essential oils kind of cool down with the water. It's perfect um, for softening the skin on your feet and also just being relaxed. Lavender oil is very good for relaxing. Um, I actually have a heat setting and a rainfall setting with bubbles on this so that kind of helps me relax for about five minutes before I actually start my pedicure. I bought this like four-in-one pedicure thing from Target. It works really good because you can use the scrubber side, you can use the um, side to scrub the bottom of your feet and it also has like it looks like a grater. You can grate the like skin or dead skin off your feet too. So I just use that to clean my feet. I use that same scrub that I used on my legs. As you can see how shiny they are. I use it on my feet as well just to get the like dead skin off so it can have fresh new skin and be softer. I think it's so important to show your feet some self-love and self-care, especially because, you know, you use your feet pretty much for everything. You use your feet to walk, to move, to run, to walk upstairs. You use it in your everyday life. So it's very important that, you know, if you're going to use something, you put love and care and take care of it so that it can show you the same thing in return. I pretty much use a hobo oil for everything. So that's kind of what I'm using to moisturize on my feet and just give myself a little massage. Now you can stop there if you do your pedicures, but I'm going to polish mine and I polished on white for the first time. And let me tell you, okay, this white polish snapped. Okay. She looking good. So that's kind of how I did my, my pedicures. Now, I always like to do my nails as well. I do them at home. I don't really go to the nail salon a lot unless like I'm purposefully or intentionally going with somebody or I just don't feel like doing them myself. But that's, you know, not very often. And I like to do press on nails because I think they're very affordable and pretty. And you can still tap into your soft girl, you know, era mentality. Um, so I start off with like a manicure because I just want to make sure that my cuticles um, are cut down and look neat so that when I apply my press-ons, it can go on very neatly and they don't grow out so fast. 
I use a nail file um, to shape my nails, but also to make the top of my nail rough. That's the key to keeping your press on nails on longer than normal is making sure that the glue can adhere to the nail bed when the nail bed is rough. Um, when it's too buffed out and too smooth, it's more than likely that the nail glue is not going to stick as well. So that's why I like to file um, to shape my nails, but also at the top of my nails to have the glue stick. So that's the main thing I like to do is making sure I give myself a nice manicure and also making sure the nail is rough before applying like the nail glue and stuff. And they'll stick really well. I got these nails from Shein for like a dollar, y'all. Very affordable. However, normally I'll go to like Walmart or Target and get the like Kiss brand press on nails and they last me at least a week and a half. And normally I'll pay about five to nine dollars depending on the style I get. After that, I used a towel to like just clean up, well not a towel, sorry, a cotton round to like clean up the glue on the outside of my nail just because it may be some nails where I put too much glue, which is fine. I'd rather put too much glue than not enough glue and that way the nail bed would be really, really clear when you're done and you'll see what I'm talking about at the end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed my soft girl self-care Sunday. I had a really good time just taking the day to pamper myself and love on myself. And I think pretty much everything came out good. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Looking forward to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.